my name is Jamie Geller. Let me first say that my intention in sharing this event is for the purpose of offering help to you with your research. The circumstances of my death are unusual, and I am ashamed of how my death came about. The facts that I lay out here are just as accurate and clear to me today as they were that day back in May many years ago when I died and came back. I have only shared this story with a handful of people whom I felt knew me well enough not to think that I was crazy. I'm not sure if the following fact has any significance as to this NDE I experienced when I was 15, but I think I should mention it. This wasn't the first time I had died. During my birth, the doctors had informed my mother that the umbilical cord had wrapped itself around my neck and she would have to give birth to a stillborn baby. I had no life signs, so the normal mixture of jubilation and triumph that a mother normally experiences didn't accompany my birth. My stillbirth was just the completion of an unavoidable event that had to happen with the expected misery and loss that a family would have to go through. Despite the doctor's diagnosis of my death, after the cord was cut away from my throat, I started kicking and screaming. I have no NDE experience memory of this death, only the accounts from my family of what it had been like, their sadness, and then their subsequent joy of bringing home their son instead of preparing a baby for burial. I'm including this experience because I want to be as accurate as I can in case this event has any relevance to my NDE. I would also like to add that even now, I have only read of one other NDE experience, and that was from Anita Morjani's book, Dying to Be Me, so I am not well versed on the types of NDE experiences others have had. At the time of my NDE, I had never heard of an NDE at all, or of an out-of-body experience either. These concepts were completely foreign to me and I didn't even understand what I had experienced until I learned more about it much later in life. The following experience that I am about to describe didn't correspond with any understandings that I had at the time. The experience itself was far and above anything I could have imagined or invented. When I was 15, my mother was lying in a hospital bed dying of cancer, having been recently given no hope of recovery. She had been undergoing bouts of chemo and radiation for two years. Until this time, her impending death was kept from me. I am the youngest of four boys in my family, and they wanted to protect me from the truth. When there was no more hope, they informed me, and I was devastated. Three of my friends, determined to help me get my mind off my troubles and grief, arranged for a weekend getaway at a cabin high in the hills, hours outside of civilization. One of my friends had brought some mild drugs, hashish and marijuana. These drugs were quickly consumed, and my friends were left with trying to find other ways to help me escape reality. At this time, in my province, the act of inhaling gasoline fumes had become popular, as it was the cheapest high available. We didn't understand the dangers of doing this, or how many kids had already died from trying this extremely dangerous form of self-intoxication. Inhaling gasoline fumes cuts off oxygen to the brain, and the victim dies literally from asphyxiation. It is said to feel very much like drowning, my friends and I took turns passing the gasoline can around, and I was the last to go. I placed the funnel from the can in my mouth and inhaled deeply again and again. This is where this world stopped and the other began. I passed out with the funnel still in my mouth and took a little trip. I was looking down at a room. In the room there are boys laughing and talking. I noticed that one of the boys isn't saying or doing anything. He is slumped over a gas can and isn't moving. I can hear the other boy's conversation, but it sounds like it's coming through water, like the sounds you heard when playing in a swimming pool with your friends. My attention keeps going back to the boy who isn't moving. His plight is very clear to me, and I find it extremely distressing and agitating, even though I do not know this boy. I'm expressing my concerns for this boy to someone standing just over my left shoulder. I know who it is that I am talking to, and the feeling of intimacy between us is so deep it's like sharing your feelings with your best friend. In our one-sided conversation, I am swearing and livid about this boy's condition and am without fear of repercussion for my behavior. I was raised to show respect, so swearing in front of my parents or any adult was something I had never done or would ever do. I keep asking this person behind me questions like, what is he doing? Doesn't he know he is killing himself? Doesn't he know that he is dying? Why is he throwing his life away? I keep getting more and more angry at this boy who is dying right in front of my eyes. I can't even begin to describe now how frustrated and angry I am at this boy for being so reckless. 
I keep on questioning whoever or whatever is standing behind me, but I don't receive any answers about this boy. At the same time, I'm not expecting this person to answer my questions. I know that these answers can only be found through revelation. After what seems like a very long period of me repeatedly asking questions about why this boy is throwing away his life, my anger reaches its peak. That's when the realization set in. I yell these words aloud, Oh God, that is me! As soon as the realization was clear, the scene below me was pulled away, almost as if curtains were drawn across it. Or rather, it faded away, like watching a soap bubble moving rapidly into the distance, swept away from you by the wind. This is where things really changed. I could feel my own presence but had no physical being. The way I described it to myself at the time was, pure mind. But this did not seem strange at all. None of the sensations I had seemed out of place or unexpected. I was neither afraid nor happy. I just understood everything made perfect sense. It was like dreaming at night, where you are suddenly living on the moon and your dog is now a dragon. And in your dream you don't question these things because they are as they are. The thing that I was most aware of is that I could feel the presence of other minds in unlimited numbers. The feeling I get now when recalling this brings to mind the word infinity. I then felt a pull, drawing me into alignment with these other minds. It felt as though we were linked together in a chain that went on forever. The next thing I was aware of was a sensation of movement. It felt like being on a train, the motion of moving forward and slightly back at the same time. It was a distinct ebbing sensation. I don't know if I was really moving, or if there even was a destination, because this is where my NDE experience stopped, and I came back to life. The following is what I experienced after arriving back in my body. The first part of coming back, I have no personal recollection. My friends filled in these details for me. They had no problem doing so because I had upset them very much. As my awareness came back to the room, I heard angry voices and threats coupled with my name. Here is what I experienced, in order. First, I'm becoming aware of a sound, and the sound slowly increases like turning up the knob on a stereo. The sound continues to get louder and starts to become separated into distinct sounds. I hear voices, the sounds of angry voices. Then two pinholes of light enter my eyes, and the room slowly expands from a pinhole perspective into to a full view. It seems like minutes, but it could have been seconds. I can only describe this as the feeling of being switched on. I then become aware of my body. I find I am standing in the middle of the room, and I notice that the gas can has fallen onto the floor. Now I will explain why my friends were so angry. They told me that I had suddenly stood up and had begun spitting everywhere, on them and all around the entire room. Even though they yelled at me to stop, I seemed not to hear them, and continued spitting in all directions. Finally, I stopped. I know now that I stopped when I could once again experience taste. I had been seeking to feel alive again. All the things that allow us to know that we are physically alive had been gone from my awareness for a time. I deliberately tried to bring each physical sensation back to me. Unfortunately for my friends, taste was the first thing I needed to experience. That is my story. Maybe it might help with another piece of the puzzle. Watch this near-death experience next about a man who regrets coming back to life. His experience beyond life will amaze you.